Hey everyone, today I would like to show you how I created this animation just here. Now I did so starting with a static Illustrator file, which I brought into After Effects and animated inside of 3D Space. So let's jump out of here and get building. So here's my Illustrator file on my desktop called lounge.ai. I used this file in a big video I did on Illustrator file import options inside of After Effects. You may want to watch that video, but everything you need to know for doing that in this video, I will show you just quickly just now. So let's quickly review our Illustrator file and then bring that into After Effects. So everything that I might want to individually animate within After Effects, I have that on its own layer inside of Illustrator. So the project is on its own layer, couch is on its own layer, picture is on its own layer, you get the idea. And also give your layers good names, it'll definitely help you later inside of After Effects. So let's minimize that, open up After Effects, and let's drag our Illustrator file into After Effects. By dragging it into the project panel, you actually bring up the image import dialog box. So let's go through a couple of these options just now. Import kind, we don't want to bring in an individual item or to bring in the thing compressed, and when I say compressed, I mean everything mushed together into a single graphic. We want all of those individual elements. So let's make sure we set that to composition. So the big question now is footage dimensions. Do we want the graphics that come in to be the size of the artwork within the layers, or do we want them to be the actual size of the Illustrator file itself? Now, because we are trying to line everything up nicely, and we'll be scaling things later. In this kind of scenario, I have found document size to definitely be the preferred option here. So again, guys, you can choose either or, but for this kind of thing, I would definitely be recommending document size. So what do I mean exactly by document size? Well, if we look at the folder that After Effects has created just here, here are all of the individual layers that were in our Illustrator file, and notice all of them are exactly 1920 by 700 pixels which is what the Illustrator file was as well. So if we look at say the couch, yes, here is the graphic for the couch, but technically all of this is empty transparent space. So the graphic for the couch is still 1920 by 700, as is the clock, even though it's teeny tiny just there. So let's keep that in mind moving forward. That'll become relevant a little bit later. Okay, so After Effects has not only brought in all of those Illustrator elements, but it's also created for us a composition here called Lounge. Here are all of those elements perfectly laid out. So you can see that I can easily turn things off and on like so, which is fantastic. And everything visually looks the same as our Illustrator file. So guys, we are ready to start building as soon as I check one quick setting. And I can already see it set to five seconds just now. But if you want to change the time of your composition, just go up to composition, composition settings, and look at the duration. So in this case, it's five seconds. Perfect. So. All of these elements currently sit in just normal flat 2D space. Let's turn them into 3D elements. The way we do that is by selecting them all, and we are looking for a little switch just here. It's the little cube just here. So if I click on one of them, because they're all selected, they will all become 3D elements. So visually nothing changes just out here, but they are indeed now 3D elements. We have a thing here called uh, one view, and you can see that clicking on that is actually changing the view layout. So if I change that from one view to two views horizontal, our comp is still exactly the same just over here. Um, that has the title active camera. The little view just over here with the top title is actually showing us a top down view of our composition. The reason we don't see anything guys is because now that all of these elements are in 3D space, they are now all effectively 2D planes. So we are just looking at the tops of all of those 2D planes but we're going to start moving these things around in Z space in just a moment. And when we do that, we will see them start to move up and down within this top view just here. Okay, so let's start moving them around. So let's click on the background element. I'm going to press P to bring up its position. Here is the X position, the Y position, and the Z position. So if I grab and drag on the Z position, you can see just out here, I'm starting to move it around in Z position just here, Z space just out here. And you can see here, because it's getting further and further away, it's also starting to shrink in size. So we will compensate for that in just a few moments by changing the scale. But 
I've been playing with this ahead of time and I know that I would like a Z space, a Z position of 2000. I'll just zoom out here a little bit so you can see it. So it's all the way back there. All of our elements, guys, are currently sitting here. And there is our background element way back there. He's all teeny tiny at the moment. So let's press S to bring up his scale and let's start to scale him up. So the idea is we're going to be doing this with all of the elements, guys. We're going to be pushing them around in Z space and then we are going to be changing their scale to make them look the same as they did before over here in the composition panel. Now I've played with this ahead of time, so I have a whole bunch of numbers that I'll um, be entering. So I'll try and move through this rather quickly. So having set the Z position to 2000, I'm going to set the scale to 175. And you can see out here, it now visually looks identical to what it did a few moments ago. But notice it's way back here in Z space and it's also considerably larger, actually exactly 175% larger than it was before. So let's start to move through these other guys. So the clock and the picture, I know I want them to be at the same position and scale. So I'm going to bring up position and scale for both of those with both of them selected. I will change those to be 2000 and 175 respectively. So basically the clock, the picture and the background all have exactly the same numbers on them. Excellent. Let's bring up the chair. So the chair, I want to set it to a Z position of 1400 and a scale of 153. Fantastic, that's back where it should be. Nice, let's look at the couch. The couch I'm going to set to 1000. So you can see it's jumped back up to there. So let's scale that up by setting this to 138. There it is just there, looking good. Let's look at the table lamp. Z position of 800, a scale of 130. The table, I don't want to move that. I'm quite happy to leave that at exactly a Z position of zero. But now the projector, I want to really bring that forward. So I'm going to set this to a negative Z position of negative 1000. So you can see how much larger it's got. So we need to now scale this down and I will scale this down to 63%. So let me just have a quick view, quick review of this. And I think it's looking great. So it looks exactly how it was when we started. But of course, if we come back to our two views, we can see all of these things have been scattered through Z space and their scales have been compensated to suit. So at this point, guys, we are ready to start animating. Now, when I say animating, we're not actually going to be moving individual pieces of furniture around, for example, what we're going to do is we're going to add a camera and then we are going to move that camera through this scene. So let's do that just now. So let's go up to Layer, New, Camera. Now this can be a rather daunting thing, a rather daunting dialog box, but there's really only two things we need to change here, guys. We need to decide what kind of camera it's going to be. Let's just keep this simple and keep it a one node camera. So the only other thing we need to consider is the preset. So for those of you who know your photography, you should probably recognize some of these numbers. What these numbers represent are different kinds of lenses in the world of photography. Now the human eye is roughly equivalent to that of a 50 mil lens. So the field of view, basically how much information we can take in, how wide the human eye can see is roughly equivalent to 50 mil. Now also, this is what After Effects uses by default. So you'll notice down in our timeline, there is no camera, but After Effects is basically using a virtual 50 mil camera to preview this scene for us. So what will happen is when we actually create an actual camera, if we set this to 50 mil, nothing is going to change out here because the camera that we actually create is basically what After Effects was using by default anyway. Just wanted to let you know, if you wanted to choose a wider angle or a greater zoom lens, you can choose any of these other guys from within here. So if you wanted a wide angle lens, you could happily go and choose the 24 or the 15. Or if you wanted a nice zoom lens, you can go and choose the 135 or the 200. Just keep in mind that if you do choose a different kind of lens, you will need to adjust the scale of the individual elements just out here to scale them up or down to the field of view of the camera. 
Hope that's not too complicated, guys. I want to keep this simple just in this example. So we're going to keep this at a 50 mil lens. Choose OK. So we've actually got a camera which is created just out here. This is what we are actually seeing this scene through. But notice it looks exactly as it did a moment ago because, again, we've chosen a camera that defaults to what After Effects was using by default. Hope that makes sense. Let's press on, guys. So if we look up in the, under our top view just here, you can see After Effects has actually created a camera. And you'll see these lines just here. That's basically representing the field of view of the camera. And you can see that it lines up nicely with the outer edges of those elements that we scaled up earlier. So of course, if you chose a wider or a narrower lens, you would need to adjust the scales of these elements accordingly. Okay, so we've got our camera in place, guys. We are pretty much ready to start animating this thing. And again, the way we do that is by pressing P with our camera selected, because that's going to bring up the position elements for our camera. Okay, so by default, it's come in at a Z depth of minus 2,666.7. Let's drag this up. So you can see the camera's moving in the top view. It's moving through the scene. And as we do so, you can see on the right, just here inside of our composition, it's zooming in, and we actually get that nice parallax between the elements because they are actually at different Z depths. So let me just undo a couple of times to get us back to that number that it came in as default. I'm going to set this back to one view, and you may also recall that when I played that video earlier, this is the actual view that we finish with. So I'm going to drag our playhead all the way to the very end, and I'm going to set a keyframe for position just here. Let me drag this all the way back to the start just now. And let's start to mess with the position of the camera. So let's uh, start to zoom in. Nice little trick, if you wish to move quickly, hold down the Shift key, or you drag over that slider, or you drag over that number rather. And you don't have to just play with the Z depth just there. You can also play with the X position and also the Y position. Now, again, I've played with this ahead of time, guys. So I'm just going to dial in some numbers that I want to use. 900 for the X, 90 for the Y, and 1050 for the Z value just there. Fantastic. So if I scrub through here, this is working perfectly. Fantastic. Now, there are a few things we still have left to address. This graphic still kind of looks like rubbish right now. You might be thinking maybe we're getting a low-res preview. That's not actually the case. The reason this looks bad is, is because we are zoomed in very highly on elements. So we brought these elements in at a particular size. We've zoomed in on them dramatically, which is why they are effectively looking pixelated. But the great thing, of course, about Illustrator vector artwork is that it's resolution independent. You should theoretically be able to zoom in on it to any factor and it should still look great because it's vector artwork. So we can actually ask After Effects to drill deep into that Illustrator artwork and make it look pretty, for want of a better term, by selecting all of those elements. And then the little option that we're looking for just here, it's this little star icon just here. You can see four vector layers continuously rasterize. So if I activate that, ta-da, the artwork now looks fantastic because again, we've asked After Effects to dive deep into that Illustrator content and give us a nice sharp image regardless of the magnification. So continuously rasterize, guys, that's very important to activate when you are looking at zoomed in Illustrator content. Another issue that I'd like to talk about is motion blur. So let me find a good position just here. Okay, so when the projector starts to come through. So this guy is moving pretty quickly through the scene. Now, when I first exported this out, it looked a little bit jittery, and I totally remembered why. It's because I'd neglected to actually add any motion blur to this. Now, there's not really a need to add it to all of the elements, but there's no harm in doing so. So again, we have all of this selected. And what we are looking for is this little series of circles just here. That's motion blur. So this is actually going to simulate motion blur within our composition. So if I turn that on, nothing changes out here until we actually come up here and turn this on. So we can enable motion blur or we can disable it. So I'll enable it just now. And I'm going to zoom in really nice and tight on our projector. Oh, excuse me. Let's zoom in. There we go. Okay. So now if I turn that switch off and on, 
So that's what it was before, but with the motion blur turned on, that's what it looks like. So we actually get a little bit of blur in between the elements, which adds a lot more realism when we actually export this thing out. So fantastic, that's motion blur. And also one thing to note with the motion blur guys is, so I'm here on the very first frame, and again, when I was reviewing this, I was a little disappointed to see how blurry the first frame was. And I thought maybe it was a, um, a factor of that continuously rasterized thing being on or not on. But what I realized was that the motion blur was actually blurring the very first frame. Now, of course, when you're playing a video, you will often see maybe the first frame paused. So I didn't want to see that first frame blurred. So what I did was, I simply came into the position values just here. Let me zoom in nice and tight just here. And all I did was that first keyframe, I just dragged that one frame in. So now if our playhead is just here, we should see a little bit of motion blur just here. So notice these um, this grid-like pattern just here. If I drag this to the very start, you'll see that's not actually there anymore. So if I drag this in, it's a little bit blurred. If I drag it to the very start before they keyframe, it's now nice and sharp. So that's just a nice little trick to know, guys. If you want to have a non-motion blurred first frame, you can just drag that first keyframe to uh, to one unit in. So that's pretty much it there, guys. I hope that wasn't too much in one video, but um, that's how you can bring your Illustrator assets into After Effects and turn them into a 3D scene. I hope it helps. Catch you later.